Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see you in the church. Welcome to worship service this morning. This is Ascension Sunday. Last Thursday was Ascension Day, and today we observe Jesus' ascension into heaven. Big day today, and we will hear scripture readers readings from the Old Testament and from the Epistle reading and from the Gospel reading as well. Friends who are worshiping at home, uh, glad to have you with us this morning. Also, this uh, service will go on YouTube a little bit later, and we welcome, we will, uh, we welcome everyone to worship with, with us one way or another. Glad to have you here. Now, we are so thankful for people again who decorated our altar. Uh, Keith Browning brought flowers, assuming, am I right? Let's show appreciation to these people this morning. Andrea Billings did the um, decoration, uh, ascension decoration. I think the statue of uh, ascended Jesus come from uh, uh, Dana New's mother and uh, Mrs. Cain, McCain, am I right? So let's show appreciation all these people as well. We have lots of going on and there's always sign-ups going on back and forth. And we will, we will pass this on again this morning. This is for, uh, hold on for ushers. Uh, this is for readers and then for ushers. So I know that you are anxious to put your name on the list so you can serve. Also, uh, our uh, children's minister, uh, Courtney Cole, has an announcement to make. So before we pray, let's Courtney make her announcement. Good morning. I have a third sign-up sheet for the day. <laughs> we are excited that Kite Fest is making a return. Um, Kite Fest will happen June 10th. We are changing things up a little bit. It will be an evening event. We're looking at a 5 to 7, grilling out, making s'mores, having some music, and just fellowshipping together as kids decorate kites and fly kites. So I'll pass this sign-up sheet around if you'll just find where you're able to serve. Some of these um, sign-ups are items that we need people to bring, and then some of the slots are more serving or volunteer positions, so we will need people to, you know, if you have s'more skewer sticks to bring those for us to share, or if you have a portable grill that you're welcome um, to let us borrow for the evening and could bring, things like that. So take a, take a look, flip through all the pages and see where you can help make this event a success. Thank you. And that thing is going to happen on our property on Highway 25 North. It is the property that church owns, and we, are, we, are, we have started utilizing it, so families and with children especially, please join with us on that Saturday evening. All right, let's pray together as we have come to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we pray and we come together this morning on Ascension Sunday as we listen to the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus ascended into heaven and be seated at the right hand of the Father and who will come again for his church. Open our ears and hearts to hear the word, to listen to the word, and to worship together in the Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come upon this gathering. We ask your presence for everyone here in the sanctuary, everyone who is worshiping at home through Facebook, and somebody who is in the parish house. Lord Jesus, uh, help us to worship you in the spirit and in the truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As I was thinking about Ascension Sunday and uh, choosing songs for us to sing today, the thought came to my mind that God our Father created this world. God our Father sent his son Jesus to come as a babe and then to uh, sacrif be sacrificed on the cross for the salvation of, our, of all people. God our Father also then, after Jesus ascended, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit 
And today, we call upon the same God to come and meet us where we are, to come and move, to heal, to bring uh, strength and courage. So I invite you, as we sing these, the first two songs, or the two songs we're going to sing this morning, one is entitled, Same God, and one is entitled, Because He Lives. Would you please stand and join us?
Please turn and greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. We invite the children to come forward as we sing Jesus Loves Me and welcome them to the children's message. celebrating Ascension Sunday. It's a big word, isn't it? Can you all say it? Ascension? Ascension. Do you know what that means? Ascension? I'm going to give you some hints, okay? What is this? A rocket ship, right? Okay. What's this? An airplane. Okay. What is... You know what that is? An elevator. That's right. Can you see, Vea? And, oh, what's this? It's a ladder, yes. And one more. Balloons. So what do all these things do? Do you know? They go up. Good job, Hunter. That's what ascension means. Ascension means to go up. Well, in the ascension story in the Bible, that's exactly what Jesus does. He goes up into heaven. So Ascension Sunday is the day that Jesus goes up into heaven. Do you guys remember the Easter story? Um, do you remember in the Easter story that Jesus died? How did he die? On the cross. Did he stay dead? No. He came back to life, right? And he spent... 40 days with his friends, 40 whole days with his friends, and he was teaching them, and he was eating with them, and I'm sure that they were having a wonderful time together. But on that 40th day, he was like, I got to go to heaven. And he went straight up into heaven, just like a balloon, just like an airplane, just like a rocket ship. But you know what? Before he went, he to told his friends, his disciples, that they had a very special mission. What could that be? You know? Do you have any ideas? Well, he said, I want you to tell the people in this country and the people all over the world the things that I taught you about God. And I want you to tell them how I died on the, sin, on the cross for all of our sins and that we're all forgiven. And you know what about that special mission? That's our mission too. That's right. Ascension Sunday reminds us that Jesus gave us all a very, very important mission. To tell other people about God and how much he loves us. Can we do that? Yeah, all right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your message of love and kindness and friendship. Help us all to be brave and to spread the good news about your eternal life, your eternal love for all of us. Please bless these children and bless their families. Amen.
the power of your spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Today's first scripture reading is Psalm 93, and that is found on page 738 in your pew Bible. The Lord rules. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, clothed with strength. Yes, he set the world firmly in place. It won't be shaken. Your throne is set firm for a very long time. You are eternal. Lord, the floods have raised up. The floods have raised up their voices. The floods raise up a roar. But mightier than the sound of much water, mightier than the sea's waves, mighty on high is the Lord. Your laws are so faithful. Holiness decorates your house, Lord, for all time. Our second reading is on page 1323, and that is Acts 1, verses 1 through 11. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote, concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, This is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Our next reading is on page 1423. And it is Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 23. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named, not only now but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. Our final reading is on page 1288. It's Luke 24, verses 44 to 53. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. 
You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending to you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy, and they were continuously in the temple, praising God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The song that we're going to be sing, uh, playing today is entitled, This Is My Father's World. It's a familiar hymn to many of us. And before we play it, I'd just like to read the third verse uh, for you to think about as we play the music. This is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king, let the heavens ring, God reigns, let the earth be glad.
job, good job. Great job, well, Bell Choir, they already blessed us in the first service this morning. What a beautiful morning. And it is Ascension Sunday. And sermon title is Jesus is Victorious Ascension. One day uh, when I was teaching our confirmation class, may have been in the previous class, and we talk about the church functions. We talk about how church is working and functioning and what are the different ministries and what is singing, what is preaching, what is teaching and who are the, what are the different ministries of the church and so forth. So when we talk about preaching, one of our confirmation uh, youngsters asked, well, how, Pastor, how you, how you prepare your sermons? I said, well, that's a, that's a good question. I said, well, I write my sermon down. I write every word I say, and I hardly never step out of that what I wrote. What I wrote, I wrote. And uh, the process will start Monday night, officially Tuesday morning, and it goes all the way through, all the way through the whole week. Uh, I hardly never make changes Saturday night anymore, so it's a long process. But when I was a young pastor back in Helsinki, and I was attending Billy Graham's preaching school in Amsterdam, Holland. He had, his organization has asked all the preachers, and especially targeting younger preachers at that time, to attend the conference. And there were different speakers, and he was, of course, one of them. And he shared openly what are the, what are the uh, secrets of his sermon preparations and how he uh, prepared for sermons, and how to fight the, uh, the, the homiletic uh, heart of the Scripture and the whole thing. He was very persistent, very, 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 um, very, uh, very good teaching. But then he said he'd write every word down when he's preparing. He writes down every word he said. Then I have been working three times for the organization, Billy Graham organization back in Europe twice, three times, Comparing myself not to be Ukrainian, but I adopted his preaching preparation style. So I write down every word what I say. I write it down and I follow it through. Now, if somebody say that no preaching needs to be more inspira inspirational, well, I believe in inspiration and there's room for in inspiration if it comes. But I believe that the Holy Spirit who is with me as I'm preparing is also with me as I am delivering. If you come behind this pulpit without preparations and you believe Holy Spirit keeps you, just, just keep your mouth open and ears open. He will fill it up. You may walk out empty-handed because sometimes you walk up empty-handed even you had prepared for the sermon. It is just all about Him. So if somebody asks how I prepare, it is writing down every word of what I say. Now, in our uh, Apostles' Creed, it is not only our Apostles' Creed, but it is Apostles' Creed of all Christians. Uh, in ecumenical version, we profess. Here's what we profess. Listen to this. We all know it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was cru crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is Apostles' Creed. And we believe that Jesus ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father, and that he will come again. This is what we profess on Ascension Sunday. 
This means that Jesus continues to work after the ascension, and then he sends the Holy Spirit to place on the day of Pentecost, which is next Sunday, to all his people. Now, my question is to people in the church sometimes, have you marked the Ascension Sunday in your calendars? Do you have a beautiful dinner at the house and you decorate your house by Ascension uh, decorations? Or some of you may say, well, I don't know about that. I don't pay much attention on Ascension Sunday. Well, what is it really? I may have heard sermons about it. And if you say this, yes, it is impossible to overstate the importance of Good Friday. When Jesus died for us on the cross, died for your sins and my sins, for all the sins of the world, then Easter morning, when he was raised from the dead, but Jesus' earthly ministries didn't stop there. Sometimes we, in the Christian tradition, we remember to celebrate nowadays less and less Christmas and, and prior Christmas, Advent season. Then we remember to celebrate Lent. In some traditions, we celebrate Lent, 40 days prior Easter. We celebrate, celebrate Easter some. Now, in some tradition, we skip Pentecost because we are a little bit hesitated to talk about Pentecost and Holy Spirit. But what is Ascension Sunday? We wonder. What is Ascension Sunday? After the resurrection, according to the Bible, Jesus taught his disciples about God's kingdom for 40 days, as we read from the book of Acts. And then he was taken up, according to what the Bible says, so there are two major witnesses to Christian faith. The first one is the empty cross. The cross is empty. In Protestant traditions, mostly our uh, crosses are empty because we want to remember that the one who was there for us and for our sins rose again. Cross is empty. So is the tomb. Tomb is empty. I've been three times in Israel, and I want to witness to myself that is the tomb still empty? It's still empty. There's nobody there. Assuming that place was one time the tomb where Jesus was placed. These two are heart of the gospel message. Proclaim the ancient Christians and early church and followers of Jesus Christ through the history as we do this morning. However, for many Protestant and evangelical Christians, as we believe we are, and churches, Jesus' ascension is simply an afterthought to Easter and Good Friday. We are almost keeping it. We don't pay much attention to it. We really don't picture too well what ascension or ascension means, what it means to us, why we observe Ascension Sunday. Let's think about it. Let's read about it. First, according to the Bible, ascended Jesus Christ, sent the Holy Spirit to his people. So Jesus had to ascend into heaven in order for us to receive the Holy Spirit. Remember, after his resurrection, after dying on the cross for our sins, after risen from the dead, Jesus that just didn't signal to, to his heavenly father who was in the heaven that, by the way, I think I got it. I think I did it all. So for, for you to know, I did it. I think I'm done with it. No, it didn't work out that way. But somewhere in the thinking of Christian believers, that is how we believe. After we have celebrated it, Easter morning, we're done with all the celebration of the church here. We don't have to even read the Bible after that, because all clear to us. There's more, not more to it. Now, in Acts 1, 1 to 2, we read in the book of Theophilus, I have deal with all that Jesus began to teach, to do and teach, until the day when he was taken up. 
That's a little, little tiny word there, but important word. The signals, the signals that Jesus' ascension does not mark the cessation, but the continuation of his work as a Lord and the Messiah. If he did not ascend, we won't be here this morning, you and I, celebrating our faith and praying to God. That's what Luke's second book is all about, in the book of Acts, which is writing and telling about Jesus who is working from heaven, from heaven as ascended Lord and Savior, through his people, by the Holy Spirit, who's been asked after accomplishing all that he was asked to accomplish, he sent his Holy Spirit to us to work through us and within us and, and for us and, 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 and supporting us. After his resurrection, Jesus told his followers, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. Listen to this. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. Don't go anywhere. Wait till I send you the counselor, the power, the Holy Spirit. And in his Pentecost sermon, Peter explains, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. Sometimes I wonder what it means when Peter says that you are seeing and hearing. So being received by the Holy Spirit means something visible, something you can hear, something you can see. It is not secret. Just, just think about this to empower them for the worldwide mission of Jesus Christ, to, for the transformation of this world, so that we believers, we are not alone, but the ascended Jesus Christ, the King of the, Lord, King of the kings and the Lord of the lords, after his ascension, he sent his spirit that took place on the day of Pentecost, which is something we celebrate next Sunday, big day when the church of Christ was born. Very big thing. Secondly, why we observe and think about Ascension Sunday is important, because Bible said that, that Jesus is Ascension, he is installed as the true king of the world. That is not little thing, friends. That took place at his Ascension. According to the Apostles' Creed, we profess that about Jesus, he ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. This is important to remember when you are professing along with your brothers and sisters, your Christian faith through Apostles' Creed. And when you come to this point, this is very important thing to remember. Jesus is taken up to heaven in a cloud, says Apostles, uh, Act of Apostles, uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 9 through 11. Remember when first martyr of the church, Stephen, was sentenced to death and they killed him, he declares that he sees the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God, Acts 7, 56. So, right before he was taken to be with the Lord. The first martyr of the church, Stephen, when he died, he was killed because of his faith. Before he died, he saw his king and master, Jesus Christ, ascended Lord, standing at the right hand of God. To me, this suggests that Jesus' ascension fulfills the important prophecy of Daniel in the Old Testament. Daniel 7, 13 through 14. Here's what Daniel said. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days 
and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not destroy it. This took place at his, at Jesus' ascension. So Jesus' kingdom cannot be destroyed and will not pass away. According to Revelation 3.21, Jesus conquered it and sat down with his Father on his throne, where he receives unending praise, and Jesus will reign and God's ring, uh, right hand until all enemies are subdued under his feet. Now we understand, not just him sending Jesus down here to minister for three years, not just him dying on the cross, not just him, his, him raising from the dead on the third day, but him ascended into heaven and be seated at the right hand of the Father, gave him full authority to be who he really is. And then you say, well, pastor, what is the next thing to happen? Is it the end of the world? What is it? It is the second coming of Jesus Christ. We call it parousia, the second coming of Jesus Christ. If you are a Christian believer today and Christ Jesus in your heart, there's nothing to be afraid. This is the day you are looking forward to. Sometimes when we discuss about these matters, you hear people say, I'm so scared. What is that all about? I said, there's no reason to be scared. Jesus is coming back and he's coming soon. He says, observe the signs of this world. It may be sooner than we believe. That is the next event following through the completion of salvation of this world and human beings. And the third thing, why Ascension Sunday is so important for us to observe and celebrate. At Jesus' ascension, he returned to his Father as our heavenly mediator and high priest. Mediator and high priest, what that's supposed to mean. Before and after his death and resurrection, Jesus declared that he was sent by his Father and must return to his father. Remember what he says in the Gospel of John, chapter, chapter 16, 28, he says, I came from the father and have come into the world, and now I'm leaving the world and going to, my, to the father, John 16, 28. And then Jesus says to Mary, do not, after his resurrection, he says, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending, ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. John 20, 17. You see, ascension is completion of Jesus' ministry. Without ascension, the salvation would be half done. There has been no sweeter reunion, can you picture this? And I was thinking about it this morning again, talking about reunions. My family had reunion gathering back in Finland eight years ago. When was it? Years ago. It was a big event by because I come from old family. It was, we have our 450th anniversary gathering. It don't mean that everybody is there three or 400 years old. We just leave about the same length as everybody else. But here, uh, the family is old and it was partially at the old family farm as well, established 1562. But there's lots of old stories. And there's lots of relatives who haven't seen each other for tens of years. So it was a truly a reunion for the entire family. Lots of people there, you can believe it. But can you picture Jesus and his heavenly father meeting after Jesus completing his, 
his uh, mission uh, in heaven. Perhaps the closest analogy is uh, a courageous soldier returning to his loved ones after a hard-fought victory. Maybe one of your family members, maybe your dad or your brother, somebody who returned home and he was still living and seemingly doing well. That's a, that's a slim uh, example of something that took place in heaven. Jesus fully accomplished his mission and glorified the Father on earth, and Jesus ascends and the Father glorifies the Son in heaven. So ascends and needed to happen, happen for Jesus to complete his mission. Otherwise, it won't be completed. Please understand that it was Jesus' homecoming to his Father that prepares the way for our homecoming to be with Jesus forever. Remember, he says in John, Gospel of John 14, I am going to prepare a place for you, and you will be there where I am. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one come to my heavenly Father except through me. So you better believe it, ascension was completion, his mission, so that he can prepare a place for you and for me and for us all, the ones who believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And there Jesus serves us as our mediator and high priest before the Father. Sometimes we get disappointed on people who serve in the ministerial capacity and we thought that they, they were not able to minister to me. But listen, it don't matter who they are, we are going to be disappointed comparing to the high priest, Jesus Christ. You know how, who I go to when I, I need somebody to talk to. I go to my high priest, Jesus Christ. Sometimes good to chat with your friends as well. I go to my high priest, Jesus Christ. I know I'm not going to be disappointed after that meeting. Do the same. Go to your high priest, who is your mediator, and who is everything you need. He's dead and resurrects and secure your forgiveness, justification and reconciliation with God, and nothing else can. It don't matter who tried to do something to you. It will fall short. But this high priest, this mediator, after completing his mission through his ascension, will complete your salvation as well. It is steady and strong. It's being built on Christ Jesus. So is his church. Sometimes we wonder if the church is as strong as it should be. Nothing is stronger in this world than God's church. It's been secured on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And through his ascension, he finished his mission. And, and the signal he sent from the cross, it is finished, will echo back into heaven on the day of his ascension. And then he shake his father's hands, hand. And then the father said, all authority is being given now to you. And then he sent his Holy Spirit to us. We who are weak, confused, lack of wisdom, and he said, please receive the power and don't leave, don't go anywhere without before you have received this power. And somebody here this morning, you don't have to wait till Pentecost Sunday to receive more power. You can receive this morning by opening your heart, by saying, Lord Jesus, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be baptized with your Holy Spirit. I want that strength. I want that passion. I want that something I'm missing. And you will receive it. You will receive Him, power, anointing, and wisdom that you are missing. Something to take home today. What does it mean to us that ascension took place? thought often overlooked, especially in our tradition, the ascension completes Jesus' mission, and it signifies his enthronement as heavenly king. 
Without ascension, it wouldn't have happened. Jesus has completed his father's mission, and he is now ruling with all authority, but only not just only ruling, but also interceding for us with all the possible sympathy and grace and love as our mediator and high priest. This is who he is. This is what ascension means. And we thank you, God, for that. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship time by the ministry of giving. Remember, this is worship time. This is not just a collection or trying to figure out what the leftovers are to, are to give back to the Lord. This is ministry of giving. This is pouring out your heart and all that you are and your resource, resources to the Lord so that he can do what he wants to do. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have invited us to be co-workers with you. With you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask your blessing upon this time of giving and ministry of giving. In Christ's name, amen. Stand if you can. Praise God from whom hope blessing flow. Praise here the creatures here below. Praise He who both in heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. Seated. Thank you. We just take a moment to recognize some of our graduates at this time. Uh, their names are written here in the bulletin as an insert there. Uh, uh, we just want to uh, mention that actually all the levels of graduation is represented. There is high school graduate Mason Henfrey. We want to congratulate Mason. Uh, there is a, um, Edward uh, Siobanu, uh, who graduated from Beria College. Um, he's our host son from Moldova. And then there is a um, Nicholas Cole, who Nicholas is there behind the sound booth. We already congratulated him in the first service. Uh, received his master's degree in teaching from the Cam uh, University of Cumberland. Congratulations. Let's show our appreciation to, to uh, Nicholas. <laughs> you did good, you did good. <laughs> then Joe White, who is affiliated to this church, he's actually a United Methodist elder and serving as a chaplain at a VA hospital. And he's also pastor in a church. He received his doctorate from uh, Vanderbilt in Divinity School and we will be seeing uh, Joe a little bit later. 
But we are so uh, thankful for all these uh, accomplishments, and we will be dealing with these families accordingly. Let's say a prayer for all these graduates today. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thank you, thankful that you have given us ability to learn, to experience, to accomplish something that is good, something that helps us as we are building our lives and our careers and our ministries. We pray for Mason and Nicholas and Joe and Edward today. Uh, lead them and guide them. Help them to feel your presence today and help, uh, help them to feel that uh, joy and satisfaction that they were able to accomplish this wonderful thing. In Christ's name, amen. We continue our prayer time. Uh, please turn your bulletins over and follow the list of uh, names. I would like to say that not everyone we pray for daily and weekly are listed here. We pray for many, many more people than this. But we are thankful that some of these names are written down here so we can pray together. Uh, I would like to add um, Cindy Davis there, Cindy is pretty ill, and let's pray for Cindy. Uh, but we continue our prayers for Courtney and baby and the whole family. We pray for Mike and Don and Richard and Bob. Bob is here. Glad to have you, Bob, here this morning. And Mike, Lord, hear our prayers for these dear people. Lord Jesus, uh, you are the main physician. You are the gear giver. You are the one full of grace and love for us. Lord Jesus, we bless these friends with the healing and strength in Jesus' powerful name. We pray for Susan, daughter of Jackie. We are so thankful for the Seal family, for the good news, for the birth of a little boy, grandson to Scott and Mary, Congratulations and blessings, the family. We pray for Wes, who is uh, the Kane family's neighbor. We pray for Donald, who is friend to Keith. We pray for um, Rebecca's uh, husband, Tim. We pray for Edna and Preston's daughter, Catherine. We pray for another Mike and Kaylee and Eddie. Lord Jesus, these are not just names on our prayer list. These are our dear friends and family members, people we love and people we know. Hear our prayers for them. Help them to feel your presence as truly as you are here with us. You are not limited in one place, but you are there where people need you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your graceful presence, healing presence for these friends. We continue praying for Margaret and Shari, Edna and Preston. Hear our prayers for these dear people. Jesus, Lord, the Savior and our friend. We pray for Chuck and Becky and Jackie, and Caitlin, and this young man, Jacob, with cancer. People in Central Europe and people in Ukraine, hear our prayers, Lord. We are weak, and sometimes, and many times, our, our reach is very limited. But you are not limited, but you are unlimited. When we, we run out of wisdom and grace, and strength, your grace is unconditional and your love unconditional. You are strong and you are our stronghold. Jesus, may these people feel your presence as truly as everyone here in the sanctuary and friends who are worshiping with us through Facebook. Holy Spirit, minister to all our needs, whether spoken or unspoken. Hear our whispers. 
hear our prayers, hear our thoughts, listen to our thoughts. Dear Holy Heavenly Father, Father of the risen and ascended Jesus Christ, you surround us with witness who have shown us the way. Inspire us with the Holy Spirit to stop looking into the heavens, but start doing the work of the kingdom. Lord, the timing is right, and you and your power are with us. Help us to seek justice, becoming a people who nourish and clothe and lament. Help us to become true disciples who minister and who care and to make disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is a written concern, and we will recognize this and pray for this as well. I invite you to please stand as we sing our closing hymn today. He is exalted. The King is exalted on high. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. By the way, did you like our acolytes this morning? We did. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful work. So please receive the blessing and benediction as you go back to your mission field. My dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. We pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>